everybody what's going on welcome back to the channel um, we're making progress slow but progress on the shop uh, we did get a bunch of work done over the last week here uh, mainly over the weekend where we had uh, basically two days and no wind and that allowed us to get all of our end wall up finally which has been great because uh, now we can put the roof on this coming weekend whether uh, weather in check will be putting on the roof I guess uh, ski is a wind it's another windy day 10 15 mile an hour winds great perfect for roofing right uh, but what we have been able to do as you can see in the shadow is get more of our roof up on the lean-to uh, sure it's only about a third of it but we're making slow progress uh, so we've got our little table set up over here and our jig and just keep plugging away a little bit at a time uh, but you know like I said uh, we are making progress it's slow uh, the back wall you can see is done so that's pretty amazing we got that done last week and uh, once we are done with some of the bigger stuff there's some little trim pieces uh, there's some closures that go around the, uh, the rafters here, the roof beams, whatever you want to call them. Um, and, of course, the trim on the corners. I can run that up to here, but I need to get the rest of the uh, roof up before I can put on that trim. Um, you know, so there's just a handful of, of things that are sort of holding me up in one way or the other. Uh, there's lots of little stuff I could do. Uh, put up the soffit um, under the porch so I can work on that if it's too windy for the back roof. Um, gutters are on the porch, that can be done. But really, there's so much that depends on getting the roof up. And um, we can't do that yet because I need the help. These are uh, 26 foot spans and uh, that needs help. Uh, but above the lean-to on the back side, there are these small uh, small panels that go between the lean-to roof and the main peak. And I, of course, need to get the uh, rest of the roof on, the lean-to, before I can put on some of the other trim panels, which are over here somewhere, uh, that look like this. If I can get out of the shadow. And this piece actually sits up on top of the roof here. And then your little gray your other uh, 18 inch, whatever it is, panel sits up here on the last little bit of wall. So I can't put this on until the roof is done. I can't put those on until these are on. And then I can work on putting on the soffit for the roof, but not really yet because I wanna make sure I get the ribs lined up from the roof, the big panels. So it's just uh, just kind of a waiting game in a lot of cases. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I kind of want to get the roof on because uh, the last thing I want to do is start with these soffit pieces and have my uh, big piece of soffit on the end. Let me show you. <clears throat> Oh, hey, it's my bit that I dropped. I was looking for you. The last thing I want to do is put up the soffit under the uh, eave for the main roof line and have that not match up with the soffit panel that goes up here. So that's why I'm kind of waiting uh, to get this on so that the under bit of soffit can go on. Then I can put on the, the eave trim and the gutters and then uh, and the rest of the trim. Uh, so it's just sort of a, a waiting game. Um, you know, and currently I've got the weather in my favor. We don't know how long that'll last, but the wind is not in my favor. So uh, it may not be cold yet and snowy, but it is windy and I'm not gonna chance uh, bring it, bringing up those big panels by myself. So we'll wait for help. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, that is about it for the moment. I'm just gonna keep plugging, plugging away 
at what we can work on. Um, oh, here's one thing I'll run and show you quickly. Is our gutter package. So we have gutters on the main roof line here and over on, around the porch. And then on the uh, bottom, on the bottom of the lean-to roof. So not on the high eave here, but the low eave uh, on the roof. We have a gutter package. I opened this box up last night to get some parts out. And look at the size of these downspouts. I mean, there's my hand. I don't have a small hand. And it clearly fits. <laughs> so those are some pretty sizable downspouts. So those will be good to have up to get the water away from the building. Um, the other big thing I'm going to need help with is this rake angle trim. These guys here uh, go on the end of the roof line. And that's where our trim attaches to on the outside uh, of the panel. Uh, so get those put up. And then these angle trims here as well, uh, they're not terribly heavy. They're just kind of cumbersome. And what those do is those will mount. If I can get out of the wind. Those will mount underneath the roof line here. So here's our eave strut with our overhang and they will mount between the eave extension here and the eave extension down there at the same angle so that we can keep our pitch and then the soffit gets screwed into that. And then of course I can put my eave trim on, hang my gutter on uh, everything else. So in a perfect world, I think this should be done before the roof goes on, but with uh, the time I have to do things, I'm gonna be putting on the roof first and then just not setting all the end screws here so I can come back and put in that trim, the gutter, uh, and then button everything up there just so I'm not, uh, not getting off, especially on my, my line for the soffit. Of course, I do have my ribbing I can go off of here as an example. So we'll try and use that if I get an opportunity to. But my main goal is just not to mess up the rib on here and be, be off. So we have under our porch, I'm uh, going to be putting in some lighting. So we're going to hang a, uh, an LED fixture uh, centered over each of the two doors here. And then around the side, we are going to center them spaced from the window. So out uh, half of a rib or half of a section. So out two and a half ribs from each window. We'll be hanging two more LED lights. Uh, they are dimmable. We're just going with kind of your standard natural light. So we don't have the bright as day, white, eye-burning welding lights out here. Uh, so we'll get those up and then have those wired in. Um, but I want to get them up and at least wired through the building to the interior uh, so that we don't have to deal with trying to poke any wires through any of these uh, purlins after all the soffits on. And the same thing for up here. We're going to be putting in four lights, one centered over each of the overhead doors and then two more lights sort of centered in the wall here. Uh, had some wonderful little artwork of our measurements and where things will go. Uh, so that's what we'll use as a reference. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, like I said before, we'll have our electric over here. Got the plywood in here for that. Uh, He'll be out shortly in a week to get that put in for us. That'll be exciting. Um, got all of our Schedule 40 conduit to run our tech tube uh, down from the house for our network cable. And uh, that's, I think, it for right now. So I'm going to let the wind uh, dictate what I do here this afternoon for a little while. And then uh, shortly we'll have some help show up and get to work on that roof. So 
Until then. One other thing I got from the crew at Great Western was some touch-up paint for the gray primer. So during either shipping or moving or building, uh, we got a few little scuffs and nicks here and there. And I just wanted to get, uh, get some touch-up paint uh, so I could cover those up and keep them protected. And I figured, you know, hey, I'll get a, a rattle can or a small little bottle of, of paint to uh, do some touch-up with. Because I did ask uh, if they had any touch-up paint for the burnished slate for the wall panels because there was a little bit of uh, damage. Um, and I got this nice little uh, couple ounce bottle. Perfect. I figured I'd get something great uh, like that for touch-up paint for the, the steel for the primer. Uh, no, I got a gallon of the industrial gray primer uh, that they use for uh, painting all the all the heavy gray steel. Uh, so that was unexpected and awesome. Uh, so again, a great thanks there to Great Western for sending that out to me. And uh, that'll allow me to touch up some of the scuffs. Uh, I'll probably do that later. Maybe in the spring, maybe once the roof is on, uh, but I want to get that uh, the structure stuff done first um, and dried in. So, all right, folks, check out some more updates we've got. I uh, didn't have a whole lot to film during just because the weather has been so crappy and windy. Um, yesterday, we were gusting winds up near 40 miles an hour. Today, we're in the 20 miles an hour type of wind. So. I don't know what I'm gonna get done today, if anything, um, other than maybe some cleanup. But uh, we did have the electrical guy out earlier this week. We had Corey from, uh, from Benda Electric come out. We got ourselves a 200 amp panel, a couple of 20 amp breakers for right now for a light or two, a couple of chargers for the battery maintainers and a 30 amp plug for the horse mobile. So we did add a LED light temporarily, a 35,000 lumen um, LED light. That's just currently stabbed into an extension cord. Um, so that's that for now <laughs> until we get the rest of the wiring done. And big part is we got all of our door caps poured. Uh, Plumber Concrete came back out and wrapped that up for us on Tuesday because Monday was so wet and disgusting. So we've got our overhead door openings. I've got a little bit of a, uh, a slope outward on the outside of the building and they brushed those. So a little bit of extra grip in the winter time. And then the doors in the back here, Ooh, that's breezy, Ooh, over here. Oh. And the doors in the back for the horses, uh, those are also in. And our, our long-term goal is to pour a floor in here, as I've said before. So that's why you see uh, there's a big, uh, big drop um, at the base of the uh, the base of the cap here. So probably those are four inches deep, roughly. We'll probably have a five-inch deep floor in here, heated on everything. So of course we'll have to excavate out to get that prepped in a few years. Uh, but for now, let these cure a few more days, knock off the forms, and then I'm going to grab some, uh, some crushed rock and throw in in front of the doorways here so we can actually drive up onto it and in. Um, but the rest of the area, I don't think we're going to put down any material until spring, mainly because I'm not going to have enough time to pack it in before the snow comes and I don't want to shoot it through the snowblower into the pasture or the lawn. So, I did get some more trim up for the porch here, and that leaves us with pretty much just waiting on um, the ability to put up our gutters. And those are 14 feet long, so 14 foot long gutters, 20 mile an hour winds, sounds like a bad idea. So, I'm kind of doing what I can. Uh, the corner trim here started that. Uh, I'm gonna see if we can get the the uh, soffit angle trim up there. Uh, it's a 19 foot long piece of galvanized steel. Uh, we'll see how I can do. And now it'll allow me to get the soffit put in so that we can put the trim on the front of here. 
And I guess at the end of the day, if I can get everything but the gutters put on uh, before it gets real disgusting out, hopefully, hopefully that'll suffice uh, until spring. Uh, this weather is turning nasty. I mean, sure, it looks nice now, but it's 46 degrees and windy. I don't like the cold. That's, that's what it comes down to. My hands don't work. So we'll see what else we can get done and uh, we'll come back. Stay tuned. Well, folks, welcome back to Minnesota. A week ago, it was nice. We had sunny skies, warm weather, and now I have, well, roughly knee high snow below the uh, roof line here. Um, about four inches, five inches everywhere else. Uh, I guess some inch, some areas here in Minnesota got nine inches of the snow. Uh, we're lucky, so I guess I'll take that. Um, haven't gotten a whole lot done. I guess last week we got a lot of the soffit done. Um, we need to get up uh, under there, and for that we need one of our lifts. You can see we've gotten uh, everything tucked in the inside for right now, which is great. Um, but the one lift I need to get above the porch and above the lean-to for the rest of the trim and soffit is there and not going very far yet. He has to come all the way along back here so we can get up on the roof. So that's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> We did go ahead today and get the, get the soffit uh, put up here so we can start trimming that out. Uh, but I think for shop updates for now, we're going to be limited. Uh, maybe until spring. We have, uh, we have these four doors. They're going to be uh, custom make uh, Dutch doors. But for right now, with the cost of lumber being what it is, those may just have to wait until spring. I don't know that I want to spend... $700 on some two by sixes uh, that the horses are just gonna kick the crap anyways. So those may, those may wait till spring. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got our entry doors. Those will be in, in a week. So that's pretty great. We'll be able to get those in at least. And the overhead doors, like I've said before, should be here hopefully the beginning of November. And uh, we'll be good to go. Um, you can see, up here, a little bit of light. That's the last little bit of sheeting that needs to go up uh, to finish closing in the building with these uh, with these panels right here. So if I can get up there, we can get those panels up and that's gonna be about it. But for right now, I'm gonna do what I can with the light I've got left since it's not snowing or raining. Um, we've got a few projects coming up. One is gonna be uh, next segment, segment of the Mustang, we'll go over what is wrong with it and what we need to fix and uh, go from there on that, you know, assuming we can get it out of here up to the garage. And then we've also got a kind of a farm project coming. We've got a bale spear that I picked up that I'm adding on some additional spears to to make it more suitable for the large round bales instead of, uh, I'm sorry, the large square bales instead of just the round bales. So we'll be working on that as well. Uh, so a couple of other items to come up and I guess for right now, that's gonna do it for the shop. Um, if the weather happens to change and it gets nice again for a couple of days, we will certainly ransack getting everything else done that we can. But I think we're just sort of, uh, <laughs> sort of hampered by the weather being what it is here, fall in Minnesota. So, uh, Whatever we have left to do in the spring, we'll certainly come back and wrap that up, which is pretty much going to be gutters and trim. That's that's going to be my assumption of what we'll have left to do. So otherwise, thank you for checking out the segment on the shop build. Uh, if you are looking for a great steel building, I highly recommend checking out Great Western Buildings. I will put their URL below. Uh, great team to work with. Um, Great product. Everyone that has come out and looked at this building, whether it's been other contractors, um, neighbors, friends, have been nothing but impressed by the quality and the design of the building, uh, down to the trims and finishes. It's just uh, just a top-notch product. So, 
So there's my shameless plug for the day. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you for checking out this uh, playlist for the shop video. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.